Sometimes in boxing, one of the most overused phrases is the phrase that styles make fights. Um, and I don't typically like to labour that point on videos too regularly, because we all know that styles make fights. But I believe this um, Dimitrenko versus Joseph Parker matchup is one where the phrase is uh, super applicable to the fight. On paper, this is a tough challenge for Joseph Parker. Dimitrenko is a massive guy. I'm not sure how big he is, but I think he's six foot seven, six foot eight, maybe even six foot nine. He's a massive guy. I presume he's going into the ring with a substantial height advantage, uh, a substantial reach advantage, and also um, probably a, a very substantial weight advantage. Looking at him, he looks to be just a thicker set, heavier man than Joseph Parker. Dimitrenko is also the kind of guy who likes to stand off and jab. You know, Dimitrenko's got fundamentals. He's a guy who's going to stay outside and throw a long one too. So, again, that's kind of adding to the impression that Joseph Parker could potentially struggle here. Uh, Parker, for me, is best when he's fighting on the outside. So, how is he going to adjust fighting someone on the outside who also wants to fight on the outside but is a lot bigger with longer reach? Dimitrenko's also got a high KO percentage. Uh, and Joseph Parker has potentially been defensively open um, and you'd also have to say um, that Dimitrenko is actually one of the better opponents that Joseph Parker's ever been in with. Uh, Carlos Takam's better than Dimitrenko but let's take Takam out of it. Arguably this is the highest ranked opponent um, that Joseph Parker's actually been in with. You know Dimitrenko he's fought at a certain level and he's only lost twice to Eddie Chambers and to Kubrat Pulev. So there are a number of reasons you could make for Joseph Parker to potentially lose this fight. You know, a bigger guy, a more experienced guy, a heavier guy, a guy with fundamentals and power. Um, there are certain ways that you could draw reasons for Dimitrenko to win this fight. However, that's why I think the phrase styles make fights is particularly applicable here. Because I actually think this is going to be a relatively comfortable outing for Joseph Parker. And despite everything I've said in the lead up to this point, I actually don't think Joseph Parker is going to struggle in this matchup. And I actually think he'll find it an easier fight than some of the lesser opponents he's actually been in with. Let's talk Parker. Um, Parker, for me, very, very good box puncher. Decent boxing pedigree. Very good on the outside. Very good when he's allowed the space, time and room to throw flashy combinations. A good jab when he uses it, an exceptional jab. Um, an above average power puncher with a really impressive offensive arsenal and variety of punches. You know, there's a lot to like from Joseph Parker here. Um, and interestingly, I think Parker and Dimitrenko are both served best when they've got a bit of time, when they've got a bit of space, when they're allowed to get their jabs working and kind of box a bit from the outside. Uh, but fundamentally, I actually believe that will go into Joseph Parker's um, benefit. Because for me, Parker is by far the superior operator from the outside. He's going to have a tremendous speed advantage over Dimitrenko. If you look at Parker, there's just so much more snap to his punches. Um, Dimitrenko, he's a bit lumbering. He's a bit slow. He's a bit unathletic. He's a bit undynamic. You know, choose whichever words you want to describe him but fundamentally Dimitrenko is a semi-predictable guy who's going to come forward who's going to throw a slow lazy jab and he's going to look to put combinations together I think Joseph Parker um, is going to have the fleet of foot um, fleet of hand to counter Dimitrenko Joseph Parker needs to get his head movement in for this fight that's super super key uh, what Parker needs to do here is avoid one of those performances where he kind of freezes in terms of his upper body movement and becomes a statue from here up. He needs to be getting low, he needs to be giving angles, he needs to be flashing head movement, he needs to be anticipating a jab, evading the jab, and then coming into range and catching Dimitrenko. And I believe he is tailor-made to do that. Dimitrenko's big, Dimitrenko's slow. Parker, smaller for a heavyweight, extremely fast, extremely athletic. That's what I want to see Parker doing. I want to see Parker slipping the jab, throwing his own jab, working a power punch off it. I think that's the simple way for him to beat Dimitrenko, and I expect him to do that. 
For me, Joseph Parker, at this stage of his career, has not proved to be a complete fighter. He's got several fatal flaws. I don't think he's at his best on the back foot. I don't think he's at his best when he's under pressure. I don't think he's at his best when he's having to fight on the inside. I don't think he's at his best when he's got an opponent coming forward, putting their head on his chest. Um, I think he's defensively open, and I think he can be caught. All of those are problems for me in Joseph Parker's game um, that could potentially prevent him from becoming the top heavyweight in the world. Do I expect Dimitrenko to expose those? No, he doesn't have the style. Now, Carlos Takam is a very good heavyweight. He's a top 10, top 20 heavyweight. But let's be honest, Takam is no world beater. Takam lacks power, lacks explosiveness, lacks athleticism, probably lacks pure boxing technique and pedigree at an elite, elite level. But what Takam was able to do was to make things very uncomfortable for Parker by constantly making Parker work, constantly putting him on his back foot, constantly closing the distance and sitting on his chest. You know, for me, Takam um, was exactly the kind of fighter to cause Joseph Parker problems. And I believe that if Takam was one level higher and had a little bit more in terms of skill set, punch variety, technique, potentially he could have got the better of Joseph Parker, potentially. Um, but a guy like Dimitrenko isn't going to pose those sort of problems for Parker. A guy like Dimitrenko, for me, um, is actually the perfect guy for Joseph Parker to be beating. Parker needs to remain disciplined. Dimitrenko is a seasoned campaigner. He's got a good chin. He's gone late in fights on several occasions. We don't want to see Parker emptying the gas tank in the first three or four rounds. He needs to expect this fight to go late. And the key is the head movement. When you're fighting a guy who's so much taller than you and who's so much more rangy than you, um, the key is to evade their jab but being able to land your own jab or being able to land your own outside combinations. So for me, Parker has got to work on angles, upper body movement, footwork, head movement. He's got to make himself an awkward, slippery target. Imagine him, let's start with his feet. Imagine him circling the ring laterally, moving around Dimitrenko. Then imagine him doing it side on. Imagine him circling side on, getting low. Imagine him circling side on, getting low, and flashing head movement. That's the target he's got to be offering Dimitrenko. And then when Dimitrenko's slow, lumbering jab comes in, you can simply move out of the way and then come in. Double up your own jab, uh, throw one of those overhands off the top of it, bring an uppercut in the centre, but he's got to slip that Dimitrenko jab. That's absolutely key. And it's actually quite good experience for Joseph Parker this, because if he is to become one of the top heavyweights in the world, you know, who's he going to have to fight? Tyson Fury, Huey Fury, Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, Vladimir Klitschko. You know, these are big, big, big guys. These are guys with gigantic physical frames. And to be honest, Parker hasn't necessarily come across that um, at this sort of level. I know he's fought Daniel Martz, but, you know, in, in terms of a sort of um, semi-elite level, big man, Dimitrenko is... I'd say Dimitrenko is a top 50 heavyweight. You know, I certainly wouldn't have him in the top 30 anymore, but I'd say he's a top 50 heavyweight. But fundamentally, there's levels to this game. And if you look at Parker's technique, his speed, his power, um, I believe he should have the beating of Dimitrenko very, very, very comfortably. Um, Dimitrenko, on paper, a formidable test. Decent KO ratio, big guy, big reach, big size, you know, uh, sort of boxer style. On paper, a big risk. But if you actually sit down and watch Dimitrenko, and I have, in reality... I think stylistically, this isn't much of a risk. I actually think this is relatively easy work for Parker. I think he should have this quite comfortably. Um, I just think the gap in class, in terms of pedigree, speed, athleticism, is going to be vast, and it's going to be instantaneously obvious. Um, you know, the advice for Parker, and to be honest, I probably sound like a broken record, because this is the advice I give in most of his fights, but the advice for me would be, be defensively sound, don't take any any risks, don't rush in, there's no need to do anything stupid, keep your discipline, keep your defences tight, look to establish your jab and go from there. Uh, fundamentally, um, I believe that once Parker gets into the habit of slipping the jab and letting his own work off, uh, he should expose a very, very substantial gap 
between himself and Dimitrenko. So I'm picking Parker to win the fight comfortably. Um, does he win the fight by stoppage? Um, I think so. I do think so, yeah. Um, if you look at the guys who've beaten um, Dimitrenko before, Kubrat Pulev and uh, Eddie Chambers, you know, Parker for me, and I think Kubrat Pulev actually did make Dimitrenko quit, but Parker for me has more power than Kubrat Pulev. Parker for me has more power than Eddie Chambers. I also think he's a more aggressively minded fighter than either of those. I view those as quite cautious ABC type fighters. Uh, I also believe Parker's got very good punch variety compared to those guys. You know, they're both fantastic technical boxers, Chambers and Pulev, but they're a bit. You know, we know what they do, you know, everything comes off the jab, etc. With Parker, I think once he establishes a lead over Dimitrenko, I expect him to be more devastating than either of those two. I expect him to be throwing better hooks, better uppercuts, with more bad intentions than either of those two. And I think because of that, I think if he gets Dimitrenko behind, or if Dimitrenko starts to fall behind, Parker will look to close the show. And I think fighting away from home at this stage of his career, against a young lion like Joseph Parker. And let's be honest, Dimitrenko's been fighting at a lower, lower level for several years now. I think if, Dimitri if Parker puts it on him again, uh, he can stop Dimitrenko late. Dimitrenko's experienced, he's sound technically, he's got a good chin. I don't expect this to be a blowout. But for me, Parker to establish an early lead on the cards, Parker to show every advantage over the sun, and possibly, just possibly, Parker to get a late stoppage. Let me know your thoughts, people. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. Um, leave your comments below. Uh, if you're new to the channel, do subscribe. I'm away this weekend, so I'm going to try and watch the fight and do a, a post-fight video. But it may not be an instantaneous response. Just lastly, I'll say, whilst I think stylistically this is an easier fight for Joseph Parker... And whilst I don't think it's necessarily going to fully test him in some of the development areas that I see in his game, I do think this is a good fight for them to be taking. Um, it's a game of giants, the heavyweight division. And this experience could well stand him in good stead as he steps up in class. As I say, let me know your thoughts, people. Please hit the thumbs up button. Please do subscribe. Thanks for watching.